Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning to all my bright students here and everyone online, and as well as those who later logged into the e-learning portal. How's everybody? Good. Good. OK, what about all those there? OK, I see Ravali. OK, great. Good. All right. Um, so where are we? You remember where we are? OK, so last week, we actually finished the skills. We completed all the skills of uh, counseling. Um, maybe before we start our next class, I'll show you another graph just to how um, you know one leads into the other. But uh, we have completed the part of counseling skills. Now, unfortunately, like every other skill that we learn, you know, we can't just have textbook learning of a skill. If you want to garden, you just can't have textbook learning, no? You have to go in and do it. Or if you learn cooking, by looking at a recipe, you don't learn, no? You have to cook. So similarly, counseling skills, you have to counsel. Only then will you pick up those skills. So we've done the best we can to understand it. Now it is actually doing it, OK? Sorry? Field work, exactly, field work. All right. Um, <clears throat> the next couple of uh, uh, issues that we are going to be looking at is uh, different challenges people may come with, all right? And uh, uh, how you as a counselor needs to be aware of a lot of these challenges so that when they come to you, you have some understanding. Now, these are very, very brief uh, we just touch and go on these topics. It's not an in-depth understanding. But nevertheless, if it really interests you, I would suggest you know do a little bit of reading and research to understand more about some of those topics. So today, we're going to be looking at two topics. One is mental health, and the other is uh, issues in marriage and family. Okay, So it's a broad overview, but I think it will help us really understand um, some things and how we as counselors or people who are going to help in this field really need to work with uh, those who may have these challenges. Okay, I'll just present my slides. Okay, is it visible to everyone? <clears throat> Visible? Yeah. OK. So we're going to be looking at mental health. And um, something that, before we get started with understanding about mental health, uh, maybe just, uh, just a little bit of a reflection for us to, uh, to get in touch with the topic. OK? So can you recall one positive emotion or feeling that you experienced? Anytime, what is one positive feeling or emotion that you experienced? Joy? Francis? Happy. happy. OK. What was happening at that time? What was happening? What was happening? It is a positive moment. What was happening that you felt happy? Yeah. Now I rejoice. So this is the happy moment. It's a happy moment yeah. because your brother gave you the mic. Yes, yes. Ah, okay. That's a happy moment. Okay. Anand, the joy. Ah, let it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what is what is some happy moments? Yeah. Uh, it was very difficult to get up in the morning when one day I got up early to pray. I was feeling so happy. You're about. feeling happy. Okay. <laughs> OK. Finishing assignments, happy. OK. So recall one negative emotion or negative feeling? So many. Uh, yes, say, Anand. Finishing assignments. Yeah. Assignment. So how are you feeling? I'm so sad, angry. On You're angry side. and sad because you haven't finished an assignment. OK. 
निखिल सो मेनी एक्सपीरियंस लाइक अबाउट सैडनेस अबाउट हैप्पी आल्सो हां सो मेनी टाइम्स सो मेनी थिंग्स हैपन दैट आर लाइक इफ इन चर्च आल्सो i am here so in my church also if someone is calling and telling that is not going well so so that that things also i have to take care okay okay so when someone calls you from your church and says something is going wrong you feel upset you feel sad, sad. Yeah. okay happy happy uh, <laughs> if yeah if good things is happening so i'll be happy okay all right okay so <clears throat> a lot part of mental health comes from a lot of our emotions our thoughts our feelings our experiences okay it's just to help you see reflect on the fact that uh maybe most of us sitting here have control or have a way to deal with our emotions or our thoughts all right but we are we're going to really look at uh, a different side where people have mental health problems so before i get into that uh i i'd like to bring about something called as the dimensions of wellness how do you know or how do you um evaluate that somebody has a good sense of mental well-being or well-being and if you look at it there are these eight areas okay physically that is you are physically well in your body in your physical health um intellectually that you can think you can study you can engage in some um uh something that keeps your intellect alive okay some kind of learning some kind of development like all of you all are doing a course so you all intellectual you are doing something that really build your intellectual minds spiritual right this is part of the spirit where you are able to connect and um uh have a walk with god really grow spiritually emotional is in your feelings okay how you are able to uh, experience those emotions whether you are able to control them social that is with other people how your relationships are occupational that is if you are meaningfully doing something it doesn't have to be only your job but something that you're doing it can be as part of uh, you can be a homemaker but take care of your home take care of children take care of others uh it doesn't have to specifically just be a job but something that you're meaningfully occupied in financial is all that you have to do with money and environmental your your surroundings how you're able to experience your surroundings maybe some people don't have a house they're living out in the streets right so all these this is what you look at the dimensions of wellness so when you are you you say that you are holistically well well when all of these areas are in an optimum functioning clear all right francis what happened a happy okay all right so you are well well okay so when we look at uh, certain one minute okay so there are certain factors that um if if you look at those eight areas of wellness they're they're broadly divided into biological factors social factors psychological factors okay how do you know that a person is um mentally strong or mentally well there are certain conditions or factors that help our mental mental well being okay so a uh, mental well being is not the absence of disease it's not that something is wrong with you it's not the abs just the absence of disease but it is a feeling that all over all round you are um you have a you have a whole sense of wellness okay so when you look at biological factors there are some things in your biological Uh, self that can contribute to mental health issues which is neurochemistry neurochemistry is the chemicals that are in our brain sometimes when that is not produced 
in optimum levels, so people can have a mental mental illness. All right? Are you following me? Yeah. Genetic predisposition is there is maybe someone in the family has a mental health issue, and it can be genetic. That is, it is passed on genetically. Uh, mental health can come as a result of some side effects of medicines. All right. Uh, it can be as a result of somatic disorders. What are somatic disorders? Are bodily disorders or just complaints of pain? You know, head is paining, stomach is paining, legs are paining without any absolute physical cause. It can actually cause mental health issues. Uh, when you're looking at biological factors, how you eat and how you keep your body well with physical exercise also affects your mental health like for example nutrition if you don't um, have good vitamin d what happens you feel sad right you feel a lot more sad it can it, it is a it can be a, a factor for depression so so like that if you're not eating properly with all the vitamins it can cause some sense of uh, uh, mental health issues physical exercise right then substance abuse, if you are taking any kind of uh, uh, substances like alcohol, drugs, or any form of substances, that can affect your mental health. And lastly, developmental. That is, developmental is right from the time they are born as they're developing, if there are certain issues there. And you must have seen autistic children. You would have seen autism. Yeah. Or you would have seen those who are mentally um, they, they, they are uh, challenged mentally, right, with, a, with, an, with an IQ that is challenged. So all of that comes under the developmental phase. So all of this are factors towards uh, mental health, all right? Uh, social, um, your religious beliefs can lead to some, to probably mental health issues, like, for example, uh, religious beliefs, there may be some cultures who who kind of believe that they have to appease their God, you know, they have to appease their God. If they have to appease their God, they have to do certain maybe rituals, certain things. So there are certain beliefs that come as a result of that. And as a result, until they do that, they don't feel a sense of peace or a sense of joy. Okay, so there, it could, there could be religious beliefs that cause that. Or even culture. Culture can affect mental health, interpersonal relationships, su social support, uh, gender identity, any kind of trauma that takes place, family issues, family background, uh, environmental events, sexual orientation, disability, socioeconomic factor. All of this can have an effect on mental health. OK? Um, is there any specific one that you want me to explain on? I'm just letting you know what affects mental health. Anything that you want me to talk about in that area? I mean, is it explanatory that all of this can cause mental health issues? Yeah? Substance abuse is when you're taking something like alcohol, drugs, substance abuse. They're all called substances in a whole. All right. Psychological is more the way that they have personal identity, the way that they see themselves, the way that they, um, uh, uh, you know, it, it, it relates to their self-esteem. It relates to the kind of emotional health that some people may have in the way that they are able to experience different situations in their life and how it affects them emotionally. Um, coping skills. Coping skills are basically, see, all of us, when there are some struggles that happen, when there is a crisis that happens, there are certain ways we cope. We may pray, we may talk to somebody, we may, you know, write it down in a journal, or, you know, there are other things that we may do. That's called coping. So that also, all of this affects our psychological factors that can affect mental health. I mean, this is just, this is just an information. Don't have to Think too much of it. Okay. Now I'm going to give you all some sentences and I want you to tell me if it is a fact or if it is a myth. You know what myth means, right? You tell me if it is a fact or a myth. Mental illnesses are untreatable. Myth. 
met okay mental illnesses right now can be treated it can be treated there are very many ways that it can be treated either through medication also through counseling support through psychological support a lot of mental illnesses can be treated lack of willpower causes mental illness Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nina? Myth. Okay, that's a myth. Okay. That uh, so so mental illness can affect anybody. All right. And it is basically not because you have that sense of will, okay, nothing is gonna go wrong with me. It, it's it's not because of a lack of willpower. Okay, so it is a myth. Can it be a reason for uh, mental health also? No. Oh. No. People get depressed when they aren't able to see what they want to do. So, yeah, that's what I said. So, pe so people who have depression doesn't mean that they don't have a good willpower. It doesn't have to mean that. There are many factors that affect, which I will come to, that affect mental illness. And it doesn't, it's not only because you have a lack of willpower. Right? You may be a very strong person, but you can have a mental illness. Okay? Marriage can cure mental illness. Myth. Okay. Marriage cannot cure mental illness. Uh, it, it Not that it will make mental illness worse, but then it can there can be huge number of problems uh sorry added yeah there can be a huge huge problems added okay mentally ill patients belong to hospitals myth francis myth what is the i what is the one question i asked <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> so yeah, mentally ill people uh, don't belong, to, not may need help in hospitals, but after that they can be integrated back into the into their home or into their community. Okay. Mental health problems are only seen in illiterate or poor people. It's only seen in poor people. Even the even even uh, the online students can can join in, please. They are only seen in. Okay, it's a myth. It. Okay, Anand is saying all of you can show by those emojis, either fact or not fact. Okay, yeah. So mental health problems can affect anyone, whether they're educated, whether they are poor, whether they're rich, whether they're uh, whatever place it can it can affect. Okay, people with mental illness can never be productive or do normal work like normal people. So, uh huh. Okay, of someone who had a mental health problem. Yeah, oh. mm, mm. yeah. it's a myth, uh, and that's why it's important to get help as soon as possible. The faster someone gets help, the faster they can move back into a normal level of uh, functioning. Okay, uh, and so that's why it should be considered. Mental illness is unlike physical illness. The illness, illness is really all in the person's head. Huh? Maybe a fact? It's a myth. Um, okay. Okay, so it doesn't represent with like like a physical 
illness that you can't see a hand is broken or a head is you know toes are broken whatever it it is not just in the so what does this statement actually mean is that means they're making it up so are they people making it up okay they're not making it up they're not making it up they are it it is a genuine uh difficulty that they they have okay although you cannot see it manifested in the physical body all right mentally ill people have weak characters since they can't cope the uh, with the world in the same way that the rest of us do what about the online students they're saying okay okay all right it's a it's a myth yes okay it's not because you have a weak character or a personality um and that because you can't cope um there are there are very many conditions that this happens okay once a psychiatric patient always a psychiatric patient myth right giving only myths okay children don't suffer from psychiatric illnesses yeah. myth yeah even children suffer equally from psychiatric illness mental health disorders are a result of bad parenting Huh? A fact. It can be a contributing factor. It's not a cause. It's not a direct cause. Yeah. So it's one of. It can be one factor that brings about, but it is not a complete result. Where many of us may be a result of bad parenting, but we're all. It's a half fact, half myth. Okay. Mental illnesses are contagious. That is, it will spread. it'll spread it'll transmit to others okay it's it's a myth attempting suicide is a sign of cowardice no, no. Uh, it's a okay so it's a myth that attempting suicide is a sign of cowardice okay it's a myth it is uh, it's not a sign of cowardice okay mentally ill patients are violent and dangerous yeah so it depends on the it depends on the condition that you that you have right uh, so some can be violent but not all patients are violent and dangerous it depends on the kind of uh, illness okay so so there again it it depends on what condition they have which i will explain to you right so not all people are violent uh, yeah what kind of a mental illness they have mentally ill means the person has a lack of faith okay met yes met all right okay good uh, so the the definition of mental health uh, from the world health you here i ah, have a doubt yes tell me Uh, so like uh, if one person have mental health <laughs> mental problem uh, we can do counseling or like we need to suggest a doctor right is any thing like we can like uh, treat through counseling so it really depends on the condition there are some conditions that definitely require medical assistance and help okay but there may be some that you can work with counseling and uh, there again they're all case specific that is it's unique to every individual so someone you may find two people who come to you with depression one may have severe depression with uh, suicidal attempts or with significant death wishes they need medical help you may find someone also with depression but it's a milder form there are no death wishes no suicidal attempts but just a feeling of sadness and uh negative thoughts we can try helping them with counseling 
all right so it depends on a it's very case specific you can't say uh, this all these kind of illnesses you can deal with uh, counseling on and these with medicines okay all right so the world health organization is what has brought about this definition mental health is a state of well-being in which a person understands their own abilities also can figure out or cope with the general stress of life also can be productive and fruitful and can make a contribution to their community so you need to have these different factors it's a state of well-being they are able to know their abilities they are able to cope with the general stress of life they can work and they can make a contribution to their community okay just some quick facts or quick understanding about mental health uh, disorders like we said it can affect anyone men women children poor rich it's very common uh, in fact the statistics may be even lesser now you if one in four people would have some form of a mental health issue yeah so there are eight of us here maybe two of us can have mental health issues here okay so it's um, they don't look very different from others you cannot make out just by looking at them at all times that someone has a mental health uh, disorder it can range from common to severe so it may be something like anxiety or it can be something that is uh, more severe like schizophrenia or i tell you what those are or like a mood disorder bipolar disorders that's a trait that's a personality trait that's not a mental health issue it's a personality trait okay but those those factors make you more vulnerable for a mental health issue when you're too pessimistic yeah it keeps maybe they get into anxiety or panic or depression uh, it's it, it's like yeah, like open doors you said that's right okay uh, mental disorder is more than just stress it's not just feeling stressed that you become mentally ill uh, it can be either brief or it can be long term so there are some people who may have it for brief episodes or it can be long winding long standing uh, it affects the quality of life that is it affects their work it affects relationships it affects their functionality it can really bring down the productivity of a person that's what we mean by quality of life they're not able to be productive it can have stress on the entire family when someone is mentally ill it can really cause a significant struggle in the rest of the family but there are effective forms of treatment there are many treatment factors okay clear any questions from the from the uh, online students okay now what can a mentally healthy person do a mentally healthy person can uh, sorry uh, is able to have good thought patterns right when we mean good thought pattern doesn't mean that always they're thinking well but it is a uh, it's one way in which they are able to really um, uh, whatever stress or whatever issue may come about they can kind of think clearly they're able to process clearly they can build strong relationships a mentally healthy person can have strong healthy relationships uh, a mentally healthy person can cope with normal stress of life whether it be a job whether it be marriage whether it be children whether it be pressure at studies these are normal stresses of life and they can contribute and do something in their community so this is what you will call a mentally healthy person someone who thinks clearly who's able to have good relationships with other people who can cope with stress and who can have a contribution in their regular uh, fun, uh, in, in, in their community. Okay. Next, what are the signs of, oh, this is not very clear. 
Okay. What are the signs of mental wellness? Okay. The signs of mental wellness is number one, um, how satisfied. Uh, okay. So, so I think before we look at that, your mental health actually influences three areas how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. Right? Your mental health influences how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. All right? Uh, strong men mental health, like I said, strong mental health is just not the apps, how you think, how you feel, and how you behave. OK? Now, uh, mental health is, like I said, is not just the absence of mental health problems. Being mentally or emotionally, emotionally healthy is much more than being free of depression or anxiety. It is the presence of positive characteristics okay, that uh, are helpful. That's what makes people healthy, the presence of positive characteristics. And this is what it is. One is a sense of contentment. That is, you're satisfied with who you are. For example, if you're very dissatisfied with the way that you look, right? Or you're very dissatisfied with the way that your life is. What, what happens? There can be a lot of worry. can be a lot of, uh, you know, you're harboring a lot of anger or a lot of resentment. Right? So just having a sense of contentment with who you are. So just being satisfied with who you are. Okay. It also is where you have, um, what can I choose here? Uh, where you're engaging with meaningful activity. That you're doing something with your time. Rather than sitting at home in the bed, sleeping all the time. But you're engaging with something meaningful. Maybe you're studying, you're working, you're meeting friends, you're doing a project. All of that is helpful. A sense of connection with others. If you're able to relate well with people, it brings about a good mental health, right? Imagine if you're fighting all the time with somebody. You kind of say something is wrong with that person, no? That they don't, they're not able to connect very well with someone. There's something unstable about them. Yeah. So being introverted is a, is a different thing rather than not being able to establish a relationship at all. Even if they're able to connect with a few people, that's fine. You don't have to connect with everyone everywhere, but always having a struggle with, with people, you know, with authority, with friends, with peers, with family. That shows a difficulty that it's, it's not a positive characteristic for mental health. Okay, because it can it can cause significant sense of um, uh, what, what do you say isolation when you're isolated from others, it really affects your mental health, doesn't it? What happened? Okay, <laughs> all right. Okay, now don't look at one and say, oh, "Yo, I'm not mentally well." That's not the idea here. What we're looking at is a good factors. That make a, so if you find, and I'm not saying that all nine of us, all nine traits that are here, each of us will have. We won't. There will be two, three missing. <clears throat> but the idea is to, yeah, find a way to uh, really work with those areas. Okay. Then a sense of self control. Do I have self control about my eating, about my spending? No? Okay about my substances, about uh, or drugs, or smoking, or alcohol? Is there a sense of control? Watching TV, phones, is there a sense of control? So, so think about it. What happens if you're watching too much of, uh, yeah, you're on social media all the time? What happens? Headache, OK. Mental health, mental, mental health, tell me. In the perspective of mental health, tell me. Yeah, you feel stressed, one, because you're seeing so many things, right? When you're looking at Instagram, you're seeing so many reels that, ah, that is physical. I'm talking about mental health. Yeah, you will be addicted. Uh, Nina said you will be isolated from everyone else. 
you will begin to compare yourself with with what you're seeing over there you're not being productive right so you can get depressed so you see that so 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 a sense of when there's no control what happened that that yes you're communicating with people but too much of that can can keep you away from actually meeting people face to face and then you find it odd to see people face to face and discuss or sort of thing everything is done through the uh, through uh, through online because there's no face face to face interaction there right so sense of self control next is forgiving others if you harbor uh, unforgiveness what happens anger irritation bitterness and that will breed contempt inside of you right you will become an angry person right in you're not tolerant you're not patient with others okay so these are all characteristics of what you say of mental health uh, optimism and hope always looking forward with optimism and saying that okay things will get better have a hope about whatever situation there is uh, tolerance being tolerant with other people with with things that don't go your way right having tolerance gratefulness being able to say have thanksgiving and saying you know with whatever i have i'm i'm grateful for or a sense of humor now these are all just signs of good mental health so someone who who has this shows a lot of confidence and self esteem francis what happened i'm worried at the way that you're looking what happened huh you also don't know what happened okay all right let's move on okay okay so like i said what's a mental uh, a mental illness a mental health condition affects um the way a person thinks a person feels and a, and the way a person behaves and it can have that is what can have a negative effect on the uh, on the person all right now what are some symptoms of mental uh, illness and these are the, and these are some things that you may need to know to recognize some signs so they may manifest in very different ways and they can have an impact on others very very uniquely all right but there are some common signs of mental health disorders that we can watch out for so the first is illogical thinking the way a person thinks is very illogical they, like they may for and this is what you know some of the uh, some of the thoughts that they may have not all again this depends on the kind of illness they may feel that people are watching them or people are talking about them or people are trying to kill them so they have very very bizarre illogical thoughts yeah yeah so those are illogical it's it doesn't have any rational behind it okay there can be nervousness or high anxiety for everything they're very very nervous and extreme anxiety yeah so it depends on what kind of illogical thinking you have right if it is something like this like i said the fear the the surety that everyone is talking about him hmm. okay so they can it can be because of two things it can be because of social anxiety also or it can be because of a mental health issue a severe mental health illness but nevertheless it's a it's a fact of mental not not being completely well right it is a factor uh nervousness or high anxiety that can be a cause of a symptom of mental uh, illness a loss of desire there's no energy there's no interest uh in doing anything there's a loss of drive you know there is just a person doesn't feel like doing anything can be a symptom of mental health uh, mental illness uh there's a decline in school in work in uh, whatever they're doing they're not functioning as well or 
uh, mood shift, major mood shift. Sometimes they're very happy, sometimes they're extremely sad. That can be another symptom. Withdrawal from interests, relationships, social responsibilities. They don't want to do anything, not talk to people, go to class, go to work, in, uh, take responsibility in their lives, nothing. Heightened sensitivity. So even small things can make them feel very, very uh, sensitive, maybe angry, maybe sad, any of that. Changes in sleep or appetite or problems thinking clearly or cogently. That is um, not being able to think well, all right? What are some warning signs of mental illness? And this is important to know because some of the times we may see one or two of these symptoms. It's important to observe and see what there is. So one is feeling very sad or withdrawn for more than two weeks straight. Okay, it is a sign of probable depression. Trying to harm or end one's life or making some plans to do that. The third is being having risk-taking behavior that causes harm to self or others. Right, like maybe they're in the car and they're driving rashly, they cause harm not just to themselves but also to others. Sudden fear for no reason, sometimes with a racing heart, a physical discomfort, or breathing. All right, so these are all, uh, it's just fear that just takes on um, something like a grip that's there. Okay, significant weight loss or gain. Seeing, hearing, or believing things that aren't real. So they may tell you that people are that are, that is there are people outside waiting for me when there isn't anyone, right? Or they're able to hear certain voices when there aren't actual people around. Okay. Excessive use of alcohol or drugs, severe changes in mood, uh, difficulty in concentrating, and significant worries that get in the way of daily activities, OK? OK, now there are different types of mental health disorders. And I'm not going to get into the um, to each of them. But I, sh I, I'll, I just need to let you know what are some of these disorders that really need significant help, OK? Mood disorders. Those are mood disorders is either depression or what we call as mania. Okay, this requires absolute help. Anxiety disorders, post-traumatic stress disorders are uh, something that happens after a like a huge calamity, like maybe after an earthquake or after a flood or after a major accident. After some trauma, they go through something called as a post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, there can be psychotic disorders. Psychotic disorders are those where you see, uh, hear, and the person is not in, an, in this reality. They are in another reality, right? They are living in another kind of a world in their mind. But for them, it is very, very real, all right? And there are, yes, addiction disorders. So you should remember that alcoholism is also a mental health disorder, okay? Or even drugs. Someone taking drugs or someone taking alcohols is a mental health disorder. And yeah, there are eating disorders, there are personality disorders. These are all the different types of somatic disorders are those who, who keep talking about pain in the body, but there is no physical evidence of why they should have the pain. No, they're not making it up. OK? It's, it's a result of some kind of a stress that's built up that it becomes more internalized. It's not that they're making it up, but there is no evidence of any kind of a physical contribution or a physical source. So they keep going to hospitals over and over and over and over again because every doctor will say, no, they may be experiencing physical pain. They may experience physical pain, but it is more psychological. It's not physical. It's psychological. Yeah, won't, don't, there, there is nothing to show that. But it's a more psychological pain. It's like this. 
when you have let's say you're very um, tensed about something you do you begin to get a headache yeah why yeah. so it's a psychological effect it's not that you have a migraine or you have a tumor in your head it's a psychological effect so psychological effect can also bring about these kind of pains and aches okay all right now uh, mental health conditions are usually uh, as a continuum okay so usually they uh, not all mental health conditions will go from stage 1 to stage 4 okay <clears throat> some will be at stage 1 some would be at stage 2 3 so it really depends but then it is always a continuum so stage 1 are those that have very mild symptoms and warning signs very very mild stage 2 are those that increase these symptoms will increase in frequency and it will become severe that it will begin to affect certain life activities and or certain responsibilities that they're having stage 3 is where there are significant episodes and there is a huge disruption in their life activities and stage four is that it is very persistent and severe that they are not able to do anything absolutely so we could we can be in different stages it doesn't mean every illness will move from stage one to stage four but it can be presented in any of this stages so it's a continuum basically okay so one of the a very important thing about mental health is what we call a stigma. Do you know what the meaning of stigma is? Huh? OK, stigma is when you ostracize or when you keep aside people saying that there is a problem like this, like, like untouchables. You remember, you know what untou untouchables are? You won't go near them because they're untouchable, all right? So similarly, stigma also means it's a social sense of a, um, what do you say, uh, you're keeping people away because of something that they have. That's what is called a stigma. So a lot of times, you know, when maybe in villages you may have seen, if someone is mentally ill, no one will really go near the person or do anything to help or support and say, ah, Gia, he's crack, he's crazy, he's mad, right? So that's what you call a stigma, when you don't associate or bring them alongside with normal phases of living, okay? Okay, so how do we reduce stigma? How can we not show any kind of a discrimination of people who have mental health illness? Show compassion and love. Encourage equality, that is, between physical and mental illness. Never, never think that physical illness is greater than mental illness, right? Physical ill is somebody being physically ill. Mentally ill is somebody being mental Ill, mentally ill. So each need the equal support and help. Educate yourself and others about mental health. Learn more about what mental health issues are. Okay, do not stereotype or label people with mental health. Oh, that one, that one who has depression. So don't label them as people with the disorder or that one who has, who keeps talking to himself, right? So uh, do not label. Uh, choose, you know, empower more than shaming. Be respectful when you talk about people or with mental health or even talk about mental health. Be a positive role model and take time to openly discuss about mental health okay how do you support those with mental health uh, issues one thing that you can do is encourage them to get help so take them to a hospital take them to a mental health professional to get help that's the first thing you can do then offer to go with them for help and support okay help them make an appointment with someone with a mental health professional get them access to services like, for example, for those who uh, have alcohol addiction, there are groups of people who work together to, to deal with um, uh, alcohol addiction. Encourage them to exercise, eat a healthy diet. Encourage them to spend time 
with their friends and family. And of course, also ensure that uh, you can also help them keep praying for them and helping helping them. OK? Um, yeah, so this is just a quick overview. If you're more interested, please go back and do some reading on it. Okay, it's just it's a touch and go. All of these topics are just touch and go that you know that you may have people who come with mental health issues and how you as an individual or as church can really function. So even as a church, we should be able to support people with mental health issues. Okay. All right. Any questions? OK, no questions at all. So we shall stop for a break and come back at 11.01. 1. OK?